All right, guys. So we'll go ahead and call it to order at 9.31 a.m. And looks like uh, I'll just uh, go through commissioners and uh, just for the record um, state uh, we have Commissioner Manellas. Present. Commissioner Paulson. Present. Commissioner Bellows. Present. Commissioner Thompson. Present. And we have Chair Petrie. Present. All right, and then absent, we have uh, Billy Reynolds, right? And, Correct. Uh, John Walters. Correct. Also, just so everybody knows, this meeting is being recorded for quality purposes. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, um, really we only have one main thing on the agenda today, and that is the uh, Dairy Queen sign. Uh, they are replacing the uh, a and that was there at the Space Age. And uh, as silly as it is, our code requires us to come before the Planning Commission for the simplest of sign reviews. So oh boy. Uh, <laughs> well, we would love to just be like, yeah, you're just replacing the signs that are already there and looks good. Um, we still have to come before you for the blessing to move forward on this. So um, as you look through your packet, I believe you'll see their proposal for the sign. Um, I'm going to pass it off to Keith. Keith, is there anything that they really need to be aware of on this uh, uh, in order to approve, deny, or approve with conditions? Well, just a few things. <clears throat> uh, first of all, uh, the only real change in the signs as far as dimensions or style is that wall sign that you have a picture of in the packet. Uh, so they're replacing the ANW sign with that one. Yeah. Then uh, <clears throat> that was all they gave me originally. And I asked, well, what are you guys going to do about all the other signs on the site? Because obviously you're going to want to get rid of the ANW message. So then yeah, I got a, a, a written Right. Um, you know, an email correspondence just indicating that for the rest of the signs that are on the site, they will just be replacing the plexiglass that says a and and replacing it with uh, Dairy Queen. So the signs, the locations, the sizes, everything else would stay the same. Um, so I, they didn't provide me with a site plan for all of the different signs, but I did have from the record before where the, all the a and signs were that were approved. And so you can see that on the site plan. And then uh, in the memo that I provided, I just go through those different sign locations by the numbers that we use for the a and signs to indicate what they're uh, talking about this time. And it's really just replacement. And then one sign is gonna be removed. There's a wall sign on the west side of the building facing the residential zoning uh, that is simply going to come off and they're not gonna replace it. Hmm. So pretty simple. That's, that's really all there is to this one. Uh, John Walters is on my phone right now, Mike. Okay. Just change that. And he's on speaker so he can hear everybody and he can talk to everybody if he needs to. <laughs> is that tight? <clears throat> so I, um, oh, I forgot to mention. So anyway, uh, all these uh, meet the sign code requirements still. So it's sign number two that's be proposed to be taken off. Uh, correct. All right. Okay. Yeah. So that one goes and then the rest of them just get changed out. Right. And with that, we'll hand it over to uh, yourself there, Chair Petrie and the commission for any questions or concerns. Okay, commissioners, so we're considering whether to approve or not approve this application for a signage change for the Dairy Queen. So are there any comments? Not for me. <laughs> this is exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, practice on Zoom today. <laughs> yeah. so, no, so no comments from anyone then? Uh, in case nobody heard John, he said no comments. 
Okay, so should we just go ahead to the vote then? Are, are we ready to, well, uh, I, do I hear a motion? Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the signage changes. As okay. In I'll second it. So second by Carol. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, any more discussion? Okay, so let's go ahead and go to the vote. So Mike, you wanna go poll everyone? Sure thing. Uh, so we'll start with uh, Commissioner Thompson. Yes. Commissioner Walters. Yes. Commissioner Paulson. Yes. Commissioner Bellows. Maybe yes. you can't hear. Commissioner Manellis. Mark, can you hear me? Commissioner Manellis. Mark, that's you. My, this Bluetooth on this computer dies out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. I have one that does that too. So uh, what's your vote on the yes. uh, sign? Yes. I got you. And Chair Petrie? Yes. That's a unanimous 6-0. All right. Well, thank you very much. No, um, so we will uh, get that out to uh, DQ for their signs. Um, and we could probably move on to the next uh, element of our agenda. Okay, so then there's a second element about the staff reporting for upcoming planning items. So did you have something for us, Keith? Um, Keith or me. One yeah, uh, Either <laughs> one of you. <laughs> you? Well, yeah, so, uh, go ahead, Mike. All right, so right now we are uh, basically have our first TAC meeting for the TSP coming up on May 28th. Uh, so that'll be uh, via Zoom through uh, Carl and DKS are hosting that. I don't know if it's Zoom or Teams. I can't remember exactly what they sent out. Um, other than that, uh, we have TSP meetings. Today, it looks like Washington County is supposed to submit for reopening on Friday, potentially. Um, that'll be phase one, um, which will hopefully, if the governor approves it, allow for group meetings of up to 25 people. Um, that still won't get us through what we really need to do um, for meeting with public and things of that nature, but we might be able to work on correspondence in public and doing surveys online and things of that nature to kind of get our um, uh, public interface on a larger level. Um, we are reviewing the master plan uh, proposals right now. Uh, we have a group of six or seven of us um, that have essentially scored the RFPs based on the guidance out of the RFP itself or reviewed the RFP proposals. Uh, we had three proposals. Um, one was from uh, Perganisi and Associates uh, with HDR. We had OTAC in coordination with Herbs Works, JLA, and um, help me out, Keith, who was there? Oh, hey, uh, Leland Consulting and Jell, who's a one man party. Um, and then we had uh, 3J consulting with David Evans and Associates, FCS. Was there a third on that or four? Herbs Works too, right? Yeah, Herbs Works. Works. Herbs Works, yeah. yes. So that was the, uh, the fourth one. So um, uh, we reviewed those, scores are in. We have a meeting on Friday with the review committee on um, which is going to be our favorites. Um, and how we move forward with that. So there'll probably be, sure. depending on that conversation, some follow-up interviews, uh, if necessary, with the uh, consulting teams, if it's close. Um, right now, to me, it kind of looks like a two-horse race, but um, we're hey, going to find out on Friday. What's that? Um, this is Carol. I have a question. Um, can you explain the project a little bit to me? Um, I'm not sure exactly what you're talking about. Okay, so uh, what we have to do in order to allow uh, 
developers to submit for annexation into the cities, we have to develop a uh, master plan. And in mm -hmm. that master plan, there will be engineering specs, finance plans, design elements, uh, zoning code. Uh, our zoning code isn't prepared to uh, handle the type of development that we're planning on. Um, part of what Keith is working on or will be working on here shortly is um, uh, the DLCD uh, House Bill 2001 stuff um, that uh, we applied for a grant for, a technical assistant grant for. Um, that will help us implement the uh, House Bill 101 or 2001 which allows for the duplex, triplex, quadplex in all zones. Um, that's going on underneath this, but the master plan itself is like your larger comprehensive plan yeah. for the entire growth area. And okay. what we're, we're trying to do is then once we come up with that larger comprehensive plan that will have our water, sewer, road networks, uh, parks and trails, um, zoning guideline design criteria, streetscapes, um, connectivity issues. It's going to basically interface with the TSP that we're working on. Mm -hmm. So we'll have a transportation plan and we'll have a master plan for the city and the growth area. And then what we'll do is try to crosswalk that with our development code so that it's all streamlined and, and um, flowing and ready to <laughs> ready to go out the door when the first developer comes knocking on the door. Mm -hmm. So okay. uh, the idea is that we have all of our system development charges and finances and everything in order before we open the floodgate. Great. Um, any other questions on that? It's going to be a long process, probably yeah. 18 to 24 months. Yeah. Um, I think some of the timelines we saw were there, we're trying to squeeze it into 18 months. Um, I know the ODOT timeline is for like June of next year. So we're down to like almost 12 months now and mm -hmm. we're just now getting our first tack out the door. But I think everyone understands the current circumstances that we're in and what that's done to us. So um, hopefully there's some leeway there in the future. Um, I'd, I'd like to mention that uh, we have a really unique opportunity here with the master plan because we're also doing the first transportation system plan or TSP that the city's ever done. So the, the fact that we can be working on both of those at the same time, I think is gonna be really helpful. As opposed to making a guess as to what the transportation system needs to look like before you've really talked about land use and what you really want in that regard. So I think it's gonna really be help, uh, helpful and a unique opportunity for us. Should be fun for sure. And uh, some exciting times. Um, I'm pretty excited to see what these groups can bring to the table. Um, after reviewing their proposals, there was a lot of good stuff in there. Um, I think you have three solid groups. Um, each one has their pros and cons, I suppose. Um, I was really excited about a few of the proposals um, and, and what they could potentially bring to the table. So we're going to have to see which one that the uh, group finally selects or wants to go with or recommend to the city council. We'll go from that. All righty. Other than that, let's see, covered uh, House Bill 2001. We have the ADU stuff coming. Keith has got that pretty well wrapped up and that'll be coming up uh, probably next month. I would imagine, right, Keith? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we'll have the ADU guidance and that'll get us in compliance with uh, current Metro uh, requirements for allowing accessory dwelling units. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I figure the work on House Bill 2001, uh, it'll be a really short window. I think DLCD is scheduled to award those funds in like August, which will be interesting because then you'll probably see contracting and everything hit in like October, November, and then we bring on assistance in January or so, December and January, and we'll have about six months to get it done. That sound about right, Keith, from what <laughs> Anna said? Yeah. Um, so, so it's going to be a really tight window to try to get in compliance with House Bill 2001. I think we're going to try to do some preliminary steps before um, basically getting the code outline and those sort of things on what we need to address, and then we're going to attack it. So. And we'll also be um, 
piggybacking the work from the master plan on the code amendments, because of course, part of a big part of the conversation for the master plan is how do we accommodate duplex, triplex, fourplex in their single family zones and neighborhoods and how should those be designed to work well. So um, the consulting teams that we're looking at have some really good strengths in that regard. All right, any other questions? What else do we have on the agenda for today? Yeah, that was it. Uh, that staff report, uh, commissioner reports. Yeah. Uh, right. I don't have anything to report other than what yeah. I just did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and then adjournment. Okay. Well, guys, anything else? Um, there's uh, three people being brought before the city council this evening for a counselor spot. So that's exciting. Right. We'll fill the yeah. vacancy. So let's see, one of them's in here. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see, so uh, the committee on that uh, reviewed, the, there was four applicants and uh, one withdrew their name afterwards. Um, I think the committee narrowed it down to two. Um, one person's included here. And so um, what we'll recommend tonight is that the council select um, either uh, Kari or Shauna um, for the city council. Uh, we felt that they were the two most qualified people with a vision that was um, in line with what we were trying to accomplish with the master plan and TSP. So I think those are our recommendations going forward and it's up to the council on which way they go. All right. Good luck, Shauna. <laughs> Thank you. Thank <laughs> you for that. What's that, Mark? Has the link for the tonight's council meeting been posted? Uh, yes. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Uh, we can forward it to you. All right, cool. Yeah, I can yeah. forward it again. Okay. Yeah, okay. Right, buried. And okay. one thing that we did encourage, uh, because we were going to have three open seats coming um, November, uh, if you're not selected, make sure that you uh, fill out your voter pamphlet and get your election stuff in here um is it it starts here at the end of the month right mount ronnie yeah may 30th and then they have what 30 days or is it what, no, uh, may 30th um to is the filing start date the end date is in august 23rd or something like that, 23rd right? 22nd i can't remember off the top of my head but right it's like it's a certain number of it's like 45 days before the election right so then you have to back them up all right so um, even if you're not selected, Shauna, even if you're not selected, make sure that you fill that stuff out so that you're in the voter pamphlet because it's just a, uh, it's vote at large. So it's just your top three vote getters, whoever uh, those are. And um, we'll get, uh, we, we said the same thing to uh, the three other candidates. So um, hopefully we'll get a decent, the mayor's really excited, he's like, Wow, we could have like five or six people running for three positions. We've never had this before. So, um, I mean, it's exciting times. It shows that we're actually doing stuff that uh, piques people's interest. So, um, we're really excited about the possibilities as well. All right. Anything else, guys? All right. Okay. Well, enjoy your quarantine. <laughs> We've been. Uh, We've been hanging in there. We're, uh, we're looking to possibly reopen City Hall um, June 1st, if everything goes according to plan for uh, limited occupancy uh, courts and um, some passport processing. So we'll see how that goes. Fingers crossed. We'll see how it goes. All right. All right. I would say we are adjourned. <laughs> right. I move that we adjourn. There we go. <laughs> All right, second. Okay. Oh, second. Second. Okay. All those in favor, raise your hand. Okay, I think it's unanimous. All right, John All right. We are Thanks, adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Have right. a nice Thank day. You. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay.